Hey indie filmmakers, Griffin here, and I'm excited to finally have my hands on the Panasonic GH4. Today I'm going to show you what this thing is capable of and take you inside its various menus and show you all of the settings that are important for videographers. This camera has a huge manual. It has an even huger digital PDF. It's 415 pages. But I've gone through the stuff that I care about. I've owned the GH3 for a year and a half, so I think I know what you need to know about this camera. So if you're new to the GH4, this will be a great primer on how to use it. And if you're interested in it, this will be a great look at the different features it has. I also just did a video with some 4K test footage of my cats. You can check that out. And in the next couple days, I will have a full comparison between the GH4 and the GH3, which right now is over my shoulder. So first things first, if you are brand new to this camera, first thing you'll want to do is pop in a battery down here and an SD card on the side here and turn the thing on. We'll flip open this LCD. Right up top, we have several buttons. We of course have the shutter, which if you push it, you can start recording video. Halfway down, focuses, makes this really annoying beeping sound, which I'll show you how to turn off in just one second. Right behind that, we have the white balance button, which gives you all sorts of different choices. You have ISO right here, where you can change the sensitivity to light. And then we have a dial where we can shift from video mode to the various different photo modes. I really only plan to use my camera in video mode. That's the one with the little camera next to it. So I can actually hit the mode dial lock. And now this dial won't go anywhere. So before I show you the rest of the buttons, let's go ahead and jump into the menu system. If I hit the menu button right here, and you can use this dial to either turn through the menu system or just go up and down, left and right into the, the menu. And if you ever wanna leave the menu, you can always just hit the shutter halfway down and you're back on the screen for filming video. So inside the menu, there are several sub menus on the left. If you just hit the arrow left, you can drop from the motion picture menu to the custom menu to the setup menu. It's also the playback menu. And I wanna start by changing a couple quick settings inside the setup menu. The first one is if we drop down to beep, Let's definitely change that. I hate these noises. The beep volume, make that nothing. Go to E shutter, that's when I focus, it makes those beeping sounds. Let's turn that off, just go to the X. Now there's also in the custom menu, there's something called silent mode, which sounds great. It turns off the flash, the beeps, the focus assist lamp, which is that red light that turns on when you're focusing. But it adds an icon to your home screen. If we turn that on, which we don't need that, so let's turn that off and by Changing those beep settings in the setup menu, we don't need to deal with that. The other really important thing to change in the setup menu is something called system frequency. In the past, Panasonic made two different cameras, an NTSC camera for North America and a PAL camera for Europe. But this is the first time that they've shipped just one camera that can do all of it. So in system frequency, you can switch between NTSC, PAL, or I bet many of you will wanna to switch to the 24P cinema mode. You actually have to turn the camera off and then on. And now we're in 24P mode where we record in exactly 24 progressive frames every second, none of this 23.98. And it adds an extra setting. If we go back into the menu, go up to motion picture and go to record quality, it actually adds a cinema 4K mode, which is the highest resolution this camera can shoot. It's 4,096 pixels across, 2160 down, this is full cinema 4K, not to be confused with UHD ultra high definition, which is 3840 pixels across. So if you really wanna get those extra wide pixels, you're gonna to wanna to do cinema 4K mode, which is only available when your system frequency is set to 24 frames. The other big thing that I like to fix on my camera is the exposure mode. In the motion picture menu, I can change the exposure mode from P for program to M for manual. There's also aperture priority and shutter priority, but really I think for filmmakers, it makes sense to be on fully manual mode. When I click that, now if I go back to the main screen, now I can use the various dials on this camera to adjust the shutter speed and the aperture. The front dial on the camera adjusts the aperture, whereas the back dial adjusts the shutter speed. And one of the great new updates on the GH4 is that you can't lower the shutter speed lower than the frame rate, which makes a lot of sense. Right now, I'm shooting at 24p, and it won't let me go below 1 25th of a second. Wonderful. So now let's go through the rest of the important settings in the motion picture menu. The first one is photo style. 
And the GH4 has several photo styles you can check out. There's standard, vivid, blah, 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 blah. There's a whole bunch. But the ones that a lot of people are talking about are Cinelike D and Cinelike V. These are two photo settings that Panasonic has come up with that are especially nice for cinematographers. This is also the area in the camera where you can change all the settings and make your own. You'll see a lot of people online saying, oh, you gotta turn down saturation two, and you gotta turn down noise reduction by five. And so anytime people are talking about those numbers, right here, you can go in and change them. Next up is recording format. I like to keep mine on MOV. You can also choose MP4. If you really wanna use less bit rate, if you wanna record more video on this camera, you can change it to AVC HD which appears to not be available in the 24 hertz system frequency. Next up is record quality, and here's where you can change it from cinema 4K to 4K, which is 100 megabits per second. You can do full HD 1080 in 200 megabits, uh, several different options here, but you will notice because I'm in the 24 hertz system frequency, I'm limited to 24 frame stuff. I can't do any of the uh, 60 frames, I would have to change my, my system frequency back to do that. And you'll notice that one of these settings has VFR available. The full HD 100 megabit mode says VFR, that's variable frame rate. And that's the next setting here. Variable frame rate is off right now. But if I turn that on, this is where you get the 96 frames per second recording on the GH4. If you set it to 96, now if I start recording, I'm getting 96 frames per second for super slow-mo. The two downsides of this are one, you don't get any audio, and two, you can't use autofocus even before shooting. Uh, you're just stuck without autofocus. Speaking of autofocus, one of the settings that I definitely turn off is continuous AF, continuous autofocus. I don't need my camera doing full autofocus while I'm shooting. I like to use it before a shot and then I don't want the focus to change unless I change it manually, so I turn that off. A new feature on the GH4 is the highlight shadow setting, where you can go through some of their presets or you can actually set your own. You can use the dials to push down the highlights, push up the shadows, and now we have really the most dynamic range possible on this camera. Another setting that increases the dynamic range is the master pedestal level. With this setting, you can either lighten the blacks by pushing them up or push them down to crush the blacks. So you can give yourself more of a raw profile that you can color correct later by upping this. The next setting I'm gonna jump down to is sound output. The GH4 has a headphone jack right on the side, right underneath the microphone jack. You can choose here to either listen to the real-time audio that comes right from the microphone or you can have the recorded sound, what's actually being recorded to the camera. You would hope that the sound coming from the microphone is the same as the sound that's being recorded to the camera, but I choose to actually listen to the one that's being recorded. I, I suppose that makes me feel more comfortable. The difference is listening to real-time audio is completely in sync with what you're hearing outside your headphones. Recorded sound is actually a little bit delayed, but it's such a small amount, I've always found it just fine. If you have nice cup headphones that are blocking everything out, it's not a big deal to hear that very split second delay. So I choose recorded sound. The last three settings I wanna show you in the motion picture menu are all audio related, but you'll notice right now they're all grayed out. And that's because we still have variable frame rate on. And like I said, audio doesn't work when that is on. So let's turn that off, go back down to audio. And here we go. We can turn on the mic level display. I wanna be able to see the mic levels on screen. Mic level adjustment, we can change the levels for the mic and mic level limiter, we can either choose to have it limit the audio so it doesn't peak, or if you really wanna take complete control of your audio and you don't want it changing it on you, you could turn that off. I'm gonna turn that off. Let's say I wanna be super professional about this. Now, if I go, hit the shutter to go back to the main screen, one of the quickest ways to adjust the audio levels without having to go back to the menus is using the touch screen. If you hit the little camera icon, there's a little microphone right here, and you can adjust the levels up and down. And we can see over here on the left, we're up three decibels right now, and we can drop it back down to zero. All right, one of the things I hate most about the GH4 is it's just killing me right now. As I move my hand around doing all these settings, if my hand gets too close to this little eye sensor, it's designed so that when you put your eye up to it, the LCD shuts off, and now we're seeing through the electronic viewfinder. I don't want that. I don't want every time I put the... <laughs> 
stick my hand next to the camera, or if I'm shooting like this and I put it up against my body, now the LCD turns off. So let's definitely turn off that sensor. I just hate it. So now if I go back into the menu and now I go over to the custom menu, first let's stop at eye sensor AF and turn that off. Now if I go down to eye sensor, I can just go to the second setting, LVF monitor switch, put it on monitor, and now the only way to switch to the electronic viewfinder is to hit the LVF button next to the viewfinder, and that will toggle between the monitor and the viewfinder. Perfect. Now let me show you several of the autofocus settings that are also in the custom menu. Most of the time, I don't wanna have that autofocus assist lamp flashing at people in the dark, so I'm gonna turn that off. That's right here, AF assist lamp. Now I'm gonna go down to autofocus plus manual focus and turn that on, and I'll show you in a second what that does. Right here on the GH4 is where you change the autofocus settings. You can change from AFS, the autofocus setting that you're probably gonna want most of the time, to manual focus over here. Turning on that AF plus MF setting is the only way that the Panasonic GH4 will let you use autofocus and manual focus at the same time. And the way that works is you put the camera into autofocus mode and while you push down the shutter halfway and it starts focusing, you can turn the focus ring and it will also focus, but only while you're pushing down the shutter halfway. While we're at it, let me show you the other autofocus settings this camera has. If I hit the function two button, I go into a special menu, I can jump between the different kinds of focusing. And I prefer the one area focus. If I hit that, now I just have a little center area that's always what focuses. I push down the shutter halfway and it turns green when it's focused. That quick menu is also an area where you can change the video mode. Let's change it to cinema 4K. You can also change your photo style you can change all sorts of settings through this little quick menu. And now let me show you the rest of the settings you need to know in the custom menu. Let's go down to guideline. I really like to have that on thirds. Let's go back out and you can see now we have the rule of thirds lines across my screen. Another thing I really like to add on my screen is a built-in level that the GH4 has. And the quickest way to get to that is just to hit the display button, which is this button over here. Just hit it twice. And now we have an on-screen level, and we can see that it's yellow right now, so I need to adjust it. Oh, there we go, green, nice and flat. The GH3 had something called record highlight, which would show you the overexposed parts of your image by just flashing on them. But the GH4 finally adds zebra stripes, which videographers love. There are two zebra stripe settings. Zebra one is set to show you highlights that are at 80% on your histogram. And zebra two is a little bit more limiting. It'll show you 95%, so I'm gonna use that one. Next up is video priority display, which I think is pretty cool. By turning this on, it changes the display on the main screen to something that's a little bit more video friendly. Now, instead of seeing things like the flash being turned off, which we don't care about. Now we see things like the frame rate very prominently, the codec, the bit rate, and video mode that we're shooting in. So just a display that's optimized for video people. And finally, in the custom menu, you'll want to turn on shoot without lens. This just means that you can be recording and you take your lens off. The only reason you'd ever want to do this is if you have a lens that maybe doesn't communicate with the camera or if you wanna do something like lens whacking, where you actually take the lens just barely off the camera. There are valid reasons to do this, and I just think it's annoying when the camera stops me from doing that, so. The last setting I wanna show you today is in the setup menu. It is live view mode, and one of the new things about the GH4 is it has a higher frame rate LCD. It actually shows you live 60 frames per second, the video that you're shooting. But I don't know if I need that. It uses more battery, and so I might as well change that to 30 frames per second and let my LCD work half as hard. <laughs> I really don't need to see those extra frames. I think I know what it's gonna look like on the computer. I suppose there's one more that's good to know. In the setup menu, if you go up to the top, the quickest way to get to format your card is just go to the top and go up one. It's the very last setting in the setup menu. So that's the Panasonic GH4. I hope that helped. And let me know in the comments if you have any questions about this camera that I can answer for you. I have a new video coming out in the next couple days, the GH3 versus the GH4, so stay tuned for that. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that already. Thanks for watching, everyone.